This is Dr. John, nurse practitioner with Janice, and uh, you know we're concerned about the rocket launch today. Which, hey, you know what? Given the, given the current situation and the current climate of affairs in in our county and in our state and in our country, um, having something to look forward to, I think, is quite healthy. You know, so we need a little positive uh, inspiration in our lives today. So, rocket launch is, hey, let's do it. So. Yeah, it's amazing. The rocket launch is the best. I hear people outside. I can't believe that I messed around today and went overlapped my rocket launch. Do you know how much I love rocket launches? You obviously I don't. didn't. I didn't, mm. but I almost sent you a message saying, did you want to postpone? But I wasn't going to be that guy. Yeah, you should have. Anytime there's a rocket launch, everybody knows. Like any of my friends, if you're watching this, tell Dr. John how much I love rocket launches. They're like my jam that's my thing right <laughs> yeah. all right so since i had to miss the rocket launch i don't even know if it happened now i'm going to be wondering i'm not even going to be able to talk to you because i'm all distracted by the rocket launch i'm in my new office beautiful yeah it's not it's a disaster right now but fred's here so he's here judging us um and he's happy about that and um, I still have a lot of work to do. Once I get it all set up and looking nice, then I'll show everybody maybe next week when we awesome. talk. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. We're gonna be real high level today. However, one of my friends asked a question because I posted, I always post and let people know I'm gonna go live with you. Uh -huh. Which by the way, I have to tell you the funniest thing. So last week I said, I'm about to go live with the doc on my page. And so one of my friends commented and she said, you need to put like a, a phonetic notation on that live because I didn't read it that way. And so I went back and I read it again and I hid it from my page because it legit said, looked like it said, I'm about to go live with the doc in my, <laughs> on my page. I was like, right. oh, that's not, that's not, that's not what I meant to say, just for the record. Um, okay, so here's what my friend said. This is a good question, and, and I know we don't usually go off the hip with these kind of questions, but this is a good one, and I think that you can answer this. So she says, should a child with asthma go to school or do virtual school during this pandemic? So this is a good friend of mine. She lives over um, on the west coast of Florida, and I haven't really watched a whole lot. I just saw casually on her page, apparently they're their uh, school district over there is giving them the option to either go virtual school or physically come back to school. And I, I, I want to say in the fall, but really that's like almost here. They're, they're about to make that decision. And so there are some consequences to them making the decision. If they decide to do virtual school, then they can't switch up and come to regular school or vice versa. So it's, it's heavy. It's stressful. All this stuff is stressful. So she has a child that has asthma and he's allergic to a lot of things. He's got, you know, he's, he, he's got some, some challenges and understandably she's concerned. So you want to weigh in with your opinion on that or would you rather not, no, not uh, knowing him that well, you know, I'm not asking you to tell her what to do, but you know, what are your thoughts? Sure. Yeah, and of course, there's always that, you know, everyone gets concerned of like, look, I'm not giving advice. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You're not my patient. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the community should re be relying on our healthcare professionals to at least drive some of the uh, fact findings amongst our community, right? And, yeah. and, and where to get the necessary information um, to encourage them to talk to their primary care provider, or in this case, a primary care provider, because primary care takes care of asthma. Um, that's, you know, that's not uncommon, whether it's a pediatrician or a primary care provider or family practitioner. Um, you know, in many cases, they may actually see a pulmonologist, depending on the severity, if it's controlled versus uncontrolled asthma. And look, what do we know about the current situation and the current climate of affairs with the SARS-CoV-2 or what everybody knows is the COVID-19 virus is that patients with comorbidities, 
and what comorbidities means, I think I've talked about it in the past, is, is chronic illnesses such as um, heart disease, kidney disease, lung disease, cancer, um, autoimmune or immune suppressant type um, disorders, those are all increased risk. And so when you look at asthma, asthma, just like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease we have in adults, um, asthma is an obstructive uh, lung disease. And so the risk when you have the current climate that's going on is, is greater for those who have some of these, uh, you know, chronic disease disorders, uh, et cetera. And so looking at if it was my child and I was blessed that, you know, um, my children never experienced asthma, but I'm actually a rugby coach in the local community. And so, and I coach youth. So in multiple teams. And so one of my rugby youth um, has asthma. And so they need to uh, quite bring their inhaler to practice and stuff like that. And so I know how, um, how scary it can be where in just a normal environment, and then you put this high risk environment um, in play in an area where mom or dad or whoever the, the parental influence is, isn't part of the child. In other words, the child is now away from home at school, relying on someone else to ensure their safety. And you know, I don't know. I think I'm kind of leaning towards mom in this where it's like, you know what? You know, I love my country. I love my state, but I'm not, you know, this is my child and I'm not going to put him in that environment. So, so you're if saying I, no. If I had the ability and not everybody's the same, right? Right. Not everybody has the ability, but if given the ability, um, virtual school, from that perspective, unless things change. In other words, if they tell the kids they got to go back to school and they have to wear a mask, I'm going virtual virtual school. Gotcha. If we're going back to school and the norm is what the norm was, then okay, you know. I'm well, yeah, I mean, he was in age. school. You know, he was in school before. You yeah, know, she's dealt with it um, for a long time, and uh, it's unfortunate because she has a job that she really likes, and she'll have to leave her job, you know, in order to stay home. We're not yeah, going to go know. down that rabbit hole. We're gonna, sure. we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it at that because I got another question that I like. Um, yeah, and just real asked. quick, you know, not not knowing the type of asthma and the age of yeah. the child. I mean, all that plays a part in it, but surely it should be an educated decision between family and the healthcare provider and to seeing what systems or what preventative measures are in place for yeah. that private school or that public school. Yeah, I, um, he's, he's young, he's uh, 10 or 11 maybe, he's young. Um, still elementary school, he's getting older but they grow up fast. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, um, I, I was interested to see what you would say about it but yeah, I agree with you. So I have another friend who asked a question that I really want to get to um, as well. And I don't want us to drag on too long. I don't want to take too much of your day. You're multitasking. I am because okay. I have a new patient. I have a new patient that just showed up and I oh. always send them a text to me when you get here because I don't want you in COVID nation. And yeah. you know, people are used to showing up early because they're used to waiting for their healthcare provider, right? And well, you we don't know, do that with you. With me, you show up, you know, a couple minutes before your appointment, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm spoiled. You've ruined me for all other doctors. So go ahead. I'm good. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> so I have a question. If you have had COVID, can you get it again? But more importantly, he wants to know what the llama's name is. I can't believe he doesn't know what the llama's name is. Can you believe that? He clearly has not been watching our show. No, he hasn't, right? No, because he's like, he's the top bill. Like we're co-stars here. That's Fred. That's Fred the llama, Joe. That's right. Yeah, he obviously needs to tune in more to the, the John and Janice show. Right? <laughs> the out of the box healthy 2020. 
Yeah. I like the John and Jan the show. I gave you first billing. Didn't you notice that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Fred's not really happy the about Janus it. Show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the John and Fred show. Yeah, right? The John, John Fred and, and Fred show with Janice yeah. chiming in once yeah. in a while. It's better than right, the so F and J show. The question, oh, he says he works. That's why he doesn't, that's why he doesn't watch. That's no excuse, is it? No. <laughs> no, that's bull crap. <laughs> okay, so his question is legit. If you have had COVID, I know the answer to this, but I'm not gonna say, cause I am clearly not qualified, but uh, if you had COVID, can you get it again? So tell us, I know the well, answer. You said you knew the answer, so let's mm -hmm. hear what what the community is being told. Because I'm assuming you're going by that, or you're going by I've already told the answer before on this. Well, no, I'm going by. I'm just really smart like that. <laughs> okay, so what does I know your things. you know in 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 the healthcare industry, and when we talk about in, in education, we call it health literacy. So, um, and that really kind of is a measurement of what the how well the community or your patients actually understand what you're talking to them about the education that you give them the disease process stuff and that's part of the challenge we right now is that the expectation is the health literacy is at the same level as some of these researchers and that's not true and what happens is, is people read what they read but then they communicate it in a way that makes sense to them and there's a lot of you know validity and reliability that's um taken away from that that's not actually accurate so what do you got can you okay. get it or not all right so Tell Joe. Here's, here's a, so here's what i think here's what i think based on what i have been told from people i don't know if it was from you or like you said maybe probably just reading the headline and taking away what i want to which is what we tend to do so two answers actually the first one is maybe we, we don't really know, but at this point they should know, right? Yeah. Do you know? No. You don't know? That's, uh, no, I have an answer, but um, okay. what's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your second answer? That's, the second answer is maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm not a doctor. Fine. Answer, doctor. <laughs> so you know what? I love your answer. Um, because your answer is right, um, maybe. And so, you know, one of the most important things to know as a as a provider, as a healthcare professional, is knowing what you don't know and being okay with that. And so, you know, this is a novel coronavirus. It's a new coronavirus. There's still much to be learned by this virus. So all we can actually do is go back and look at the previous coronaviruses. So, for example, SARS-CoV, which was in 2002, 2003, I've mentioned that before. This is mm -hmm. SARS-CoV-2. And so, you know, if you take a picture underneath a microscope, so to speak, they look similar, but they're not the same. Let's just call them cousins, right? And okay. so there's some literature that reported that if you had SARS-CoV, you may have, they may have found some people who have antibodies that last up to three years. And so right now, if you listen to the media, and some of the things that are being communicated to the public, um, they're saying that the antibodies only last a few months. And um, to be honest with you, I mean, we've only seen it for a few months, right? Right, but so, we have seen it for a few months now. So at this point, so now I'm thinking, okay, has it happened yet? Like, have there been any documented cases of somebody getting it more than once yet? Well, so that I haven't seen any documentation on, but I will ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Do people get influenza more than once? Well, yeah. Is influenza a virus? Well, yeah. Okay. So, okay. I feel you. So, you. you know, I mean, I think we can say that if we were to hypothesize uh, on this, because it's new, can you get it twice? Probably. You know, who knows? It depends on how long the antibodies last. And so when we talk antibodies, we're talking about those IgG antibodies that, um, you know, 
here at Island Direct Primary Care, we screen for? Is it MedFast Urgent Care Centers we screen for? So we're screening for IgM and IgG antibodies. So if the antibodies are there, at what point are the antibodies not there? And so we're really not going to know until we take people who showed positive IgG antibodies, let's say my 10 patients that I screened in uh, March, April time frame, and I bring them back in six months and say, hey, look, you know what? Can I test you for antibodies again to see if you have them? And, um, and if they do, then that's going to give us, again, somewhat of an answer. But then we're going to have to bring them back again in three months or six months. And so the big question is, is who's going to pay for that? That makes sense. And, you know, you know, I had the antibody test on Friday. Not everybody knows that. Everybody's watching. Just so you know, I had the antibody test on Friday and we had technical difficulties. I swear I'm going to get all these technical difficulties handled one of these days. Um, I just got, are you still there, Dr. John? Yes. Okay. You are frozen for a yep. minute. Um, I just got the, uh, looks like we're frozen on. Facebook. I hope we didn't lose our connection. But anyway, I just got the video that I recorded um, loaded yesterday to YouTube and it's shared on my page. Um, hopefully the quality of it is good. It ended up being three gigs on my phone. My phone was not happy about that and did not want to upload it to Facebook. But anyway, I finally got it. And it was funny because I talked to my son that evening and he was like, hey, I didn't get to watch the video. Uh, you got the antibody test? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what was the result? And I said, you got to watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tell him. <laughs> I made him watch right. the video. But I'm going to go ahead and reveal. So I was negative for the antibody screening. Antibody screening. Um, I was negative. But I'm still not convinced that I didn't have it. In January, it's still possible in my mind. I mean, I know that I don't have any antibodies right now, according to that screening, but um, so which kind of plays into what you're saying, which is that, you know, there's the possibility that that antibody, you know, goes away, which means that I'm vulnerable regardless, right? Sure. Is that my, yeah. my interpretation right? Yeah, yeah. And in, in um, you know, if we wanted to get specific, while I know some people who were sick and there's even people saying, well, even medical professionals, well, I was sick, you know, last November or October you, and, I pro and I probably had it and, um, you know, and, yeah. you know, that's speculation. Um, you know, what I would say is that, okay, let's hypothesize that you may or may not have had it in January. Were you in contact with anybody but yourself during that time? Um, in January, when I was sick? Yeah. Um, you were working some and you saw me and you weren't wearing a mask and you sat in my office for two hours. Like three times in a week. True statement, yeah. right? Yeah, true, true um, statement, true story, all of those things, true story. And so if we look at how contagious this virus is, mm -hmm. one may argue that one of any of the individuals that you had come in contact with would have gotten some kind of symptoms afterwards. If indeed you had maybe. this, maybe that's, I said may, yeah, if yeah. indeed you had this very contagious virus. And remember, in that time, this was, you know, brand new. And I mean, people that were exposed got exposed and they got it. I mean, you lived in, you tell Maybe someone from though. New York. All right, let me stop you right there. Let me stop sure. you because I was, I was looking for this opportunity. So I had a friend who was telling oh, me. Oh, to stop me? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no, to, to bring this up. So I had a friend who was telling me about um, an interview he saw with the people. Remember the people who got stuck on the cruise ship? Mm -hmm. it, when all this first started and they got stuck on the cruise ship forever, you know, sure. too much of a good thing is too much. Poor things. I wouldn't want to be stuck on a cruise ship. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. But he got it. So they were interviewing this couple. So the man got it and was horribly sick. And they had them locked into their, into their port rooms. Now you've been in a port room on a cruise boat. And okay. 
All right. So there's small quarters. Anybody who doesn't know who hasn't been in a port room on a cruise boat, it's like go get in your closet and close the door because that's a good uh, comparison. So he was locked up in this cruise in the port room with his wife and, get it. Mm -hmm. and his wife didn't get it. He had it really, really mm -hmm. sick, but his wife did not get it. So that's like, wait a minute. You know, they're nope. saying, oh, it's so super, super duper um, contagious, contagious, but you're locked up in a closet basically with somebody who's got it and you don't get it. How's that happen? How's that? Work? I have multiple families with a single member who tests positive and all okay. members test negative and not just once, mm -hmm. but more than once. Like we followed the track of the virus. In other words, we did active swabbing, people tested positive and the family tested negative. We waited, you know, a period of time. We tested them again. The one who was positive is still positive. The one who was negative is still negative. Then we did the antibody screening. The one who was positive had antibodies. The one who was negative didn't. And, mm -hmm. and so they bas basically, they stayed true to the path the whole way. So much so that we even changed the labs that we sent it to just to see if a different lab made a difference, right? And so yeah. in partnership with the MedFast Surgery Care Centers and Island Direct Primary Care, we've been kind of doing our own little epidemiology study, if you will, uh, of the validity and accuracy of the testing that we're using, right? So when, when talking research, we all, we frequently use words like may, because it may happen, but it may not happen. And so you want to be able to talk uh, with a certain level of confidence, um, you know, so um, confidence level intervals are important, statistics are important, sample sizes and numbers are important. And, and so that's what we look at. And so we look at odds ratios and, um, you know, numbers to treat and these kind of things. And these are the things that are confusing for the layman. And so they kind of typically they may typically skip over that part of the research and they just read the discussion or they just read the abstract and you really miss the true essence of, of the study. There are just a lot of variables that it Lots. sounds like. So, Very individualized. So what it sounds like to me is that anyone who has been, who did test positive early on, it would be a good thing for them, even if they already had the antibody screening, because I know some people who did test positive, had the antibody screening and, and the antibodies did show up. It would be good if they would go get that done again to see if those antibodies then go away. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes. Be good for them? Yeah. That would be It'd great. Be good yeah. for us to understand, right? It would be, it would help the community Mm -hmm. in the system understand and that's gotcha. you know part of the purpose of doing all this testing we're testing a lot of asymptomatic people why because there's asymptomatic people testing positive this isn't new early on we said once we get enough test and we start testing this will happen you yeah. know so this really isn't a surprise to the system even though um, the communities tend to be overwhelmed with it you do more tests you're going to have more positives Okay, I have a friend who just um, asked a question. And this is not a surprising question. It's a controversial question, but it's not a surprising one. And I already know, I think, the answer. I think she loves the way I do that. I know the answer. Like, I'm the, like I'm, I'm the smart one here. I'm not. I know. Well, I got two minutes, and then I have a patient appointment. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'm just going to read this to you real quick. Um, so she says, so, mask or no mask? <laughs> and then she that says, um, is the question. Right, right. The chicken or the egg. Or, I know the answer. I know the answer to this. Um, she says, I'm watching the coronavirus update live on the news and the vice president is not wearing a mask, but the health and the human service secretary is. They're talking about opening the schools when that county starts August 4th and all staff and students K through 12 are required to wear a mask. So do you want to answer this? Um, educated one or should I answer it because I think I know all the answers. 
You know, I love hearing your answer. And the reason why is because it's a good take on what's happening out in the community and the media. And it allows the readers to say, you know what, I understand the same way or the listeners, I understand the same way or yeah, you know what, I heard the same thing. And then I can kind of give my my take on it. And in many cases, my take supported by science. And in other tapes, it's supported by um, experience and, um, you know, an opinion too. So. Well, for the record, I have great respect for your input and advice and all that. And I do listen, even though it may not seem like I always listen. (laughs) I listen. I do. So what do you got? Mask or no mask? We'll make it quick. Okay. All right. Make it quick and let you go. So um, mask, mask. Yes, mask. Like, why not mask? I mean, the the thing is, is that I hear people go, well, it's not going to prevent this. It's not going to prevent it. No, nothing is 100%, but every little bit helps. And just wear the stinking mask and let's be, let's stop. Yes, mask. That's it. That's my input. All I scientific. told my son, I go, you know, mask or no mask, right? And I go, look, condoms aren't 100% either, but you're wearing one of those, you know? <laughs> Um, that was, that was live, right? <laughs> so, um, but anyways, you know, so mask or no mask, uh, interesting. So I didn't wear a mask often. I'm very selective on where I wear a mask, uh, until they published an article about me recently in one of the local magazines. And I'm just like, you know what? People are going to see with, see me without a mask. And, yeah. and so what does that portray? So I think mask there's something to be said for masks for choice. But at the end of the day, um, I think not wearing a mask, for medicine, we look at risk and benefit. And for us, we say first do no harm. And so if I was gonna say first do no harm, the chances of me harming someone wearing a mask is less likely than if I didn't wear a mask. Yeah. And so while it's not a hundred percent and it's actually the percentages are all over the place when you look at the public media, if one person wears a mask, there's less chance. If two people wears a mask, there's less chance, If et cetera, et cetera. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a barrier. It doesn't eliminate um, most, even the people who aren't wearing them correctly, it still provides something. Nothing's better than good hand washing. 20 seconds with soap and water or hand sanitizer, 60% alcohol or better. Keep your hands off your face. Don't rub your nose, don't pick your nose, and then don't put your hands in your mouth. If you go to the bathroom, wash your hands. You know, so if we do basic hygiene, and look, we should respect one another's space anyways. So being within three feet of someone's, as the kids say, in front of their grill, right? three feet in front of their face, then you, again, reduce the risk. So stand slightly to the side of one another, cough into your arm or into your elbow, Um, stay back three feet or greater, you know, when communicating. Don't socialize in large group functions with people who you don't know. I'm okay with having a barbecue at the house and people getting together because those are people you know, because if something happens, then you can back trace it to where it's at. And, and, you know, and then there's that piece. I believe in herd immunity. I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay. Um, so, you know, but I do think we need to be conscientious in who we're potentially exposing and we need to be considerate of those around us. And, and I'm a love your neighbor guy. So at the end of the day, if loving my neighbor means wearing a mask in front of him so that he or she is more protected than mask. Agreed. Agreed. So, okay, I, hey, have to I know go. you have to go, but let me just say this. So next week, can we talk just the whole time about kids and school and how this is going to change things for them? And because that's a hot topic and I have a lot sure. of friends that that's really hitting home with them right now. So okay. let's do that next week. Next Wednesday, same next time, Wednesday. same place. Me, you, Fred, here. Go see your patient. Thank you. Have a great Take day. Care. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, bye, everybody.